everybody. We're back again. It's Dave and Darren, the two old bloggers, joining you from GMG to talk your Minnesota Vikings. How you doing, Darren? Pretty good, Dave. How about you? Doing all right. A little chilly down here today, but obviously not as chilly as up there with you. But Which is going, what, we, what we call winter here. Yeah, in Yellowknife, above the Arctic Circle. Yes, wonderful. But we're going to warm things up with a little Vikings talk. First thing you wanted to talk about is this week, the Vikings made it official that Clint Kubiak will be our new OC. Curious, how do you feel about Clint? being the new man with the plan. We had talked about this uh, a couple of weeks ago, Dave, and you knew, you know that I, I don't think either of us were super hyped about the spawn of Gary uh, being named the OC, but it seemed like, uh, and congratulations, you were right on this call and I was wrong on this call, or you were half right <laughs> anyway, because you were thinking maybe there'd be a Denison Kubiak. Hey, skull Mary, skull Drew. Um, but, uh, but anyway, uh, Kubiak is the guy, uh, I'm not super excited about it, but it is what it is, as everybody likes to say these days. And the one thing that, uh, I have been thinking about it since he got named OC. And one thing that, um, I guess what I hope for is that we know that it, uh, it, I think it was pretty important for Zimmer to have continuity and the same kind of offense that we've run the past two years. He gets that with Clint Kubiak being in there, who has been learning under his dad for the past few years. Okay, fine. And I, the Vikings offense has taken a bit of heat the past two years from mm -hmm. people that I know who are Viking fans, and we'll get into that a little bit. But last year, okay, they were fourth, I think, in total yards and 11th in points scored. So this is an offense that was effective last year. It's just that it wasn't as effective as we think it could be or it should be. There's a lot of good pieces here for Clint Kubiak to work with. We know that. Dalvin Cook, Adam Thielen, Justin Jefferson, even Irv Smith, and even Tyler Conklin. We don't know about Rudolph being there. I think he won't be back. But And they might add some people in free agency or in the draft. You got Cousins. Okay, we've talked about him pretty on every show. It's unavoidable, but he's got some pretty good stats, right? He does has played last year a lot of times in the seasons. He was really was one of the reasons that we were in ball games as much as shit as he normally takes. So <laughs> Kubiak's got some weapons there. What I think we want to see, or I want to see, is a little bit more creativity on the offense. You. And don't run, make it not so much obvious play calling, run on second and 10, use a little bit more motion, and let's use all of our weapons effectively. Uh, you know, like like in this red zone, we had problems in the red zone. Mm -hmm. uh, and particularly down in the goal line, it would be like the Vikings would always like, huh, you know, to Dalvin Cook two times. And on third down, they're like, well, they know we're going to go to Dalvin, so let's throw one. Well, the defense knew that too, and then it was wow. tough to, to do. What, you know, the, the best, one of the best play calls I saw all year from the Vikings, remember the Chicago game late in the game? We had a drive. We had to move the ball to ice it. Mm -hmm. We had an obvious running situation. I think it was second and long. And they did the old thing that other smart teams do. Like Rudolph did a block, and then he leaked out. Cousins drops it over the defender. Rudolph runs for like 20, 30 yards. Pretty much ball game right there. Right. And we just, too often, we were just too predictable and like in situations like that. So I'm hoping Kubiak is a little bit more open, a little less predictable, uses the weapons that we have, all of them more effectively, and maybe we get that rolling top five offense that we think that we can have. Well, he is young. He doesn't have experience, but you got to get it somewhere. So obviously, this is the first chance. And uh, going with young guys in this league sometimes works. Works great. Sometimes fails miserably. I went to look at uh, his history, and there isn't a whole lot of it. But he worked under Musgrave, right, in the Turner offense. And he's worked under his dad. 
both the criticisms of both those offenses is that they are predictable. That you can sit there and see and go, it's second and eight. We shouldn't be running the ball, but we know Dalvin Cook's going to get the ball on this play, right? We know on first down, most of the time, Dalvin Cook's getting the ball. And we can sit there and call the plays from our couches and our recliners, and it drove us absolutely nuts. He hopefully, this is just a hope, rather than learning to be predictable, has taken lessons from that to be unpredictable and know that, hey, you could build up, you know, the predictability scale and then, like in that Chicago game, deviate from it to get the big gain. But you need to have that predictability is already built. Let's start the deviation early. Let's maximize those weapons. Let's get the defense guessing. One thing I hope he brings is more motion because motion tells Kirk Cousins, indicates to him what defense is being played, whether it be zone two or, you know, whatever it is, zone three, what, whatever it is. It shows who's covering who because that motion man will bring that indicator with him or that indicator stays and somebody else gets him. That makes that pre-snap read so much better, and you maximize your success. Hopefully, since he is a young guy and he's more open to things like that, and I think that's one of Kyle Shanahan's favorite tools, is that he employs those and that we see something good and not Musgrave or his dad where it's every play is predictable and we know what's going to happen. And then we have to rely on, hey, we got to catch up in the fourth quarter again <laughs> type of deal. I want to, I want an unpredictable from the start and the score points. Do you think that can happen? I think it, it can. And like you said, Kubiak's a young guy, so he's been brought up and came up through the college football system in, in the early 2000s. And when, you know, a lot of these spread offenses were really starting to kick into gear. So he's, and he was a, a safety in college, so he's had to defend against those sort of offenses. Mm -hmm. So he should know how effective they can be. He's, he should have been able to see how other teams have been able to use some of those concepts in the, in the NFL level with success. And we, we know he's got a good relationship with Kirk. Cousins. Cousins mm -hmm. trusts him, and we're assuming right now that Cousins will be the Vikings quarterback in 2021, even with some of the trade rumors that have been swirling, but assuming Cousins is there, he has a good relationship with him, that's good. I I think that it remains to be seen, but I think Cousins, uh, Kubiak's age will should make him more open to being less like dad. He's not going to get away from that totally because it's his dad and uh, we know we probably feel that his dad is going to have his ear a little bit too right, right. like uh, and and there's also there's been some talk that Kubiak's actually still going to be with the organization in a like a consultant role uh and in, in which case he will have some opinions mm -hmm. on how the offense should be run i think the big thing for kubiak is is can he, being a young guy, 33 years old, never been a coordinator, can he assert his philosophy and his will on Zimmer, who wants things, offense a certain way, and is a very strong-willed guy, an experienced guy? Can Kubiak find his voice and, and speak up for what he believes in when he wants to do things a little bit differently than what Zimmer does? I think that's going to determine how unpredictable the Vikings offense is in 2021 because if if you have a bad game and Zimmer starts crapping on Kubiak for not running the ball mm -hmm. enough or not doing this and that then is is Kubiak the younger strong-willed enough and believes enough in what he's doing to say listen Mike I know you're the head coach but I'm the offensive coordinator and I'm leading this unit and this is how I think is this is what I think is going to work and we're going to do it this way or else I'm not going to be here. I think that's going to be the big battle. Big test. Well, there's one way to solve it real quick. Win early and win often. And as long as you're winning, I think Mike will be happy. Uh, 
and, yeah. and that's a test. And that, that's a test for almost any coordinator, right? You get in there, unless you've got a long string of decades of work behind you, it's win early, win often. You do that, you keep your job. And with everybody's job on the line, it looks like after this season, they're going to have to do that. So I think there's trust there, but we'll find out. You know, we'll find out. We don't need we don't need to do. We spoke in the last show or the show before that. Um, the um, that the Vikings don't have to do a whole lot differently than what they're already doing because the offense was successful last year. But just like the things you mentioned and we and I mentioned, th- there's tweaks that need to be done here mm-hmm. on play calling and the offensive philosophy that would help it. And then of course they've got to fix up the offensive line a little bit, which we're going to talk about here in a little bit too. Yep, Anthony brought that up. Offensive lineman, offensive lineman. I think Anthony's Anthony's bullish on the offensive lineman <laughs> as a fix. Um, I think I think Clint. It's going to be a coin flip. I think it's I think it can work, but I also think it can fail. And so, I think we just got to wait, wait and see, see what he puts together, see what the final product going into the season looks like we still have free agency and the draft go through and to see if he can add some stuff to the offense what i like you know everybody's talking continuity and that was the main reason well with that continuity most everybody on the offense already knows the playbook right from that you can expand the playbook and you can tweak things more easily than you can if you brought somebody brand new in and you're changing the verbiage and you're changing the system. All that is there so you can do that. You can make things more complicated for Kirk so he digests that, right? And it's not a surprise to him when it breaks. You can do that now. And I think if they do it right... Vikings have a chance to compete, especially in our division, especially in the conference for that matter. But we shall see. And we could, yeah, and we don't know who they're going to draft or bring in in free agency who could be that extra little bit of mm-hmm. that secret sauce or secret ingredient that could that could help take the offense to another level. Be it on the offensive speed. line or the uh, wide receiver three or – you know, who knows? It, it, could, it could be, yeah, any position. Well, other than quarterback, I would say. Which, like I said, I think I think Cousins will be here. Uh, and if he is here, hopefully he's healthy. If, he, if Mannion is the backup again. Anyway, but that's another topic that I don't want to get into. Um, but let's go to that offensive line. You asked me offline, will Riley Reef be a Viking in 2021? Are we going to retain him or are we going to cut him or trade him or do whatever? What do you think? Anthony's on the Joe. Thuny train. We need money Thuny, for that, Thuny Joe. Thing. We do. And who's the, uh, I should know this, but um, this isn't the question you asked, but there's like two, Thuny and then there's another big guard that's gonna, that's on right. the market that, could be. Uh, and I can't remember who it is. I think he might be from the Saints or something. <laughs> well, <it's, laughs> and we know we all, we all know we hate those guys. But yeah, what what do I think is going to happen? Well, I was encouraged that when I saw this week that the Vikings paid Reef that bonus, uh, mm-hmm. even though he just barely missed his playing time incentive, and only because he was in. Uh, uh, that was a COVID Thank thing, you, was Anthony. it not? Yes, yeah, right. COVID. Brandon Sheriff. Brandon Sheriff. That was the other guy. I've always liked him. I'd love it if the Vikings could get Sheriff. Although he didn't have a great some of the games I watched Washington, he didn't play all that well. But he's got a great track record. Right. Uh, doesn't isn't always healthy. Anyway, Riley Reef, <laughs> who is a Viking <laughs> for now. Um, I was very happy to see that the Vikings did the right thing and got him that bonus uh, because uh, he would have he, he was so with the that was the right thing to do i also think it it was a could have been like a peace offering to riley reef to get him to consider an extension that might push some of the money back that he's owed this year into well, let's look future at that years. contract yeah please all right per over the cap 
right now for 2021, Riley Reef's cap number is going to be almost 15 million. And that's a lot. And that's a lot with a team that needs to get at least that much under the cap. Now, if they cut him, we'll save just under 12, as it says there. Yep. And uh, so, do they try to renegotiate? Will he even, will he even agree to it? Because he may say no. I mean, he's getting up there in years. Uh, it should but be interesting. You... I mean, he's an, he's an adequate tackle in the league. His evalu- his valuation is the 20th out of all the left tackles. That's about right. He's fine against power guys. He's not good against the speed guys. We drafted a tackle that we moved to guard last year. Does, you know, Ezra move over? We could draft another tackle in the, this draft. You don't know until we get closer and they make that decision. But my question to you is, do you want to keep him? I do, because I I would like to see the offensive line not have... You played offensive line, right, mm-hmm. Dave? Uh, and you often talk about uh, the importance of an offensive line being together. You got five guys, and it's kind of like... a. It's like a, an orchestra almost. They have to be get practice together to so, be smooth and, and all singing from the same note. Right. And so they the know, right. you know, against especially against pass rush, they know when they can see in their peripheral vision what's going on, who to help, who to slide off, who you can move aside, etc. And that all comes with that practice and that working together. And I remember the offensive lines for the Chiefs for so long, way prior to Andy Reid. And those guys were, a lot of them were up in their 30s, but they were perennial all pros because they knew exactly what each one of them was going to do and in whatever situation. And they knew where, where to help each other and all sorts of things like that. And that comes, that's the chemistry Right, and that comes with being together for so long. Continuity, especially on the offensive line, helps. Um, it helps improve it. Now, better players helps improve it as yeah. well, probably even more. But if you keep what you got, it does tend to think it will improve. Mark was just talking about uh, Larson. Just had the comment about Reef wasn't very happy with the pay cut he took in the in the preseason uh-huh. and uh dave talking oh lie jason's get, giving me the gears <laughs> yeah, and uh and that is true that's why i thought that it was uh important it was interesting that the vikings paid reef yeah. that 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 bonus because if you're going to get rid of them like you would just say fuck it right like we're yeah, not going to save that, that extra he's, million. He's, it rolls into next gone. year. You're what? Less. He's gone anyway, and we're going to put Cleveland at left tackle or draft somebody, and blah 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 blah. But they didn't do that. They did the right thing and paid him the money that he would have made if he hadn't had, unfortunately, had that COVID diagnosis or whatever it was. Or the positive and, test. Yeah, yeah, the positive test, and then from, and that gives them a little bit of, I think, goodwill to look at working on some sort of a financial arrangement that keeps reef with the Vikings next year. And, uh, and then after that, we don't know, but I, I, I reef is solid. And last year I've said it before, I thought he played very well. You probably might've been our best offensive lineman. I, I like continuity. Gave up like one sack last year. Yeah. I'd have to read it, few... but it was, it was good. It was good. There His was very, pen... very, yeah. Very few games where I was like, Oh, reef, what do you, Mm-hmm. They beat Reef again. Like I don't remember ever thinking saying that. Uh, so instead of getting rid of Reef, and then you've got maybe you put Cleveland from guard to left tackle, and then 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 you don't even you not only guards. have to replace, then you need two guards. Mm-hmm. Keep keep Reef, keep Cleveland where he is. You got Bradbury O'Neill, and then you've got to get rid of find a replacement for Dozier, and they're like Nick Easton was release this week yeah. he is an okay guard he could be in our price range maybe you put him in there joe tooney yeah sure oh, Brandon yeah, Scherf, yeah. Mm-hmm. they're, they're going to be expensive 
but the continuity I would like to see Reef back because he was he was very he was good last year and he was also he's been very durable while he's been with the Vikings and we need guys who play well and who are going to play all the time on that offensive line because we know the offensive line is a big reason why the Vikings have offense has been a failure at times the past three years too much pressure on cousins not enough strong run blocking and particularly up the middle last year i thought was where things were really bad yeah it was Uh, the middle that was bad now what would you think of if they drafted a tackle and moved reef to left guard i don't like that because reef has never played guard uh, keep him at tackle. Either if you're not going to find a way to keep him, then I guess you you release him and you save that almost 12 million, and you can maybe use that to get a guard and put Cleveland at left tackle. That's not what I would like to see, but sometimes things have to happen. But don't put Reef, who's played tackle all his whole NFL career and college, as far as I know, and put him at guard and figure it's going to work. Didn't work with Mike Remmers. And I don't think it's going to work with a, a vet like Reef either. Um, but but I'd like to see if if we're. I feel that there's a decent chance Reef will be back. Okay. Based on them paying him, I know that, one million, million. Is, is peanuts. One million is peanuts in the NFL world. But again, why would the Vikings do that? If they weren't going to try, I think they're at least going to try to keep Reef. It, it, in the end, it's up to Reef in, in a yeah. lot of ways whether he wants to come back with the Vikings. If the Vikings are going to approach him and say, "We want to uh, work on the financials a, a little bit," mm-hmm. and and it's not like Reef will be unemployed long if he is released. No, There's he wouldn't like be. He'd be snatched. Up. About now, twenty-five snatched... fucking teams in the NFL that need to tackle, either right or left tackle. Well, let's see what his base is. If. Uh... His base was six, six and a half million. Eh, that's that's cheap for cheap for a decent tackle because the Vikings would be stuck with his bonus. Um, unless it yeah, was a- I would rather I would really rather the Vikings use a first round pick on a defensive player. I realize you know if somebody like Devonte Smith is there at 14, uh, even though you got Thielen and, and uh, J- JJ, it'd be tough to pass on somebody like that. You know, the old Randy Moss thing, right? You know, hey, we got two great receivers, but what's wrong with getting any third, even greater one? Uh, mm-hmm. I don't think that that would happen, but, or, or, you know, say somehow like, I don't know, Trey Lance is there at 14. Uh, maybe. <laughs> That'd be sweet. Crap. Crap! Crap would start happening then. There'd be a lot of people on the phone to Spielman looking to to trade trade back and say, "Oh, by the way, Rick, and you can have you can have all of our seventh, sixth, and seventh rounders for the next decade too, just to sweeten the pot." <laughs> um, well, that that would definitely be interesting. And as you've watched Mock Draft Mondays, I've selected Trey Lance. We've selected him a few times already as the quarterback of the future, uh, but. I agree with you. I think the our first round draft choice, barring getting any more first rounders in a trade, will go to a defensive lineman, either three technique or edge, the best one available to improve the pass rush on that side of the ball because it's so desperately what needs pa- it. what pass rush? Mm-hmm. Well, we'll have one if Hunter comes back, but we certainly didn't yeah, have we'll one have last that side, and we'll have Pierce plugging the middle in the run defense, but the the push up the middle pass wise out of a three technique or a, an edge guy isn't there on that one side. Wanham I hope steps up and does well. Right? And I hope if he doesn't, he's you know keep part in the rotation. But I do believe that is going to be necessary and probably the direction the Vikings go pending um, any major off-season move like a Cousins yes. trade. So I saw I saw a mock yesterday where we the Vi- a three-round mock where the Vikings picked Aleem McNeil from NC State, who's like a big defensive tackle. Uh, they picked him in the third round, and then I you know I 
I don't follow college football and I don't know the players very uh, intimately other than like the big names. But uh, I started reading up on this guy and the, this kid and uh, he is very intriguing. Uh, say a lot, a little bit raw on the pass rushing, but like a big body who's uh, good on the run and has a lot of pass rushing potential to get somebody like that in the third round when we got well, we got what we got at defensive tackle right now. I'd be all on board with that. Drew, Drew, I'll be expecting to see a good write-up on Ali McNeil with your defensive tackle draft draft big board here in a few weeks. Yes, get on it. For those who don't know, Drew has been working on his big board for the season, and his QBs are out already. So, Ooh, those that are Anthony looking for likes Ali McNeil. Mm-hmm. Tell me more, Anthony. <laughs> we probably don't have time, but but anyways, it, it's it's going to see. I'm cool with keeping Reef. Reef is an adequate tackle. He's decent against pass rush, except for those speed guys. Um, but the speed guys are generally in Chicago, and Chicago is imploding. So I'm cool with that. Um, the one uh, one thing I forgot to mention about the tackle situation is that Rashad Hill is a is a restricted free angel uh, free ag- free angel free agent <laughs> again this off season, and so uh, if we don't resign him, then that's a guy that potentially you might put at left tackle, but you can't because you don't have him anymore. Right. And, if, but I think Hill's if, been a if, good. If you wanted to keep Cleveland at guard, I don't know. I don't know what the hell the Vikings' plans are for Cleveland. I, I have never figured that out. I, you and me both, brother. I wanted after, him after as the left first, tackle. After the first, after they, after training camp when they started putting him at guard, I was like, everybody's like, what? Uh, he's yeah. a tackle. What, yeah, what you... and he had the speed to handle the speed rushers. He needed to build yeah. up his upper body strength to handle, upper and lower body to handle the power guys, but he had the speed to handle the speed guys. And why Which is exactly play. why you put him inside, right? He lacks power, so put yeah. him inside. And that's just the deal. Inside, you're playing in a smaller box, right? At guard, you're play- when it comes past defense, you're playing in a smaller box. Tackle goes from the guard all the way out, right? He's got to defend that. The guard is between the tackle and the center, obviously, and he's got a smaller box. He's not dealing with the speed as much as he is dealing with the power. He needs to be able to set his hips and and just literally stop that guy. Whereas a tackle can ride his guy outside and beyond the quarterback. It's by just a change of direction. You use you use the the defensive rush's momentum to move him in a direction where off of where he wanted to go, but basically adjacent to it. It's almost like judo where you're using that. It's easier that way. Um but we'll see. I I thought he's going to be our starting left tackle last year or close. Um, I'm not. I don't object to moving Reef in. But they didn't. They put him over on the opposite side, at a spot he never played, and he did decent, especially for a rookie, especially for a tackle. He did decent at guard. It was. It's one of those things that I scratch my head and go, why. And we've been doing this for years. Um, this is where there should be like a, you should have a ticker when I say things, Dave, there should be a ticker below that says, Darren Campbell actually knows jack shit about football. So <laughs> don't listen to anything he says. He never you know as much game. as I do, brother. You know as much as I do and everybody else, all us fans that love to talk it, um, because we love our team. It's that simple. We want to see the Vikings succeed. And by succeed, that means hold up the Lombardi, um, you know, roll it across the ice since we're not doing a boat party like down in Tampa. Do something. We want to succeed. We want good offensive line. We want good offense. We want good defense. All of it complimentary to make it all the way and to win the Super Bowl. You With think that, that greedy? You think that greedy prick Brady would give us one of those Super Bowls? <laughs> you would think. But I did seven love. Is, isn't seven enough? <laughs> but I did love that. You know, everybody thinks Tom Brady is a Superman when it comes to quarterback, but he's no different than us, other than his model wife, and the fact that he got shit faced afterwards. And I can appreciate that, as many good drinkers can. Um. 
Any last words, Darren? No, not really, Dave. Uh, it'll, uh, we're getting now into like the now the off season has really begun, and we've got what another three, four weeks before free agency starts when we'll when we'll see what the Vikings do. So that's yeah, I guess that's where the talk is t- talk is going to be now. Who could the Vikings get in free agency? Um, the Cousins also, trading, but yeah, the the Cousins trade talk seems to have died down a bit this week, but maybe it'll pick up again. It's still it's still percolating. There was something is it I percolating said. among fans, or is it percolating amongst like writers who follow the actual league? Well, amongst I, I, writers, but there was one, oh, and I don't have that quote available, but they talked about the decision will be made by like March 10th or March 14th or something like that, um, that we should see something. Now, obviously, that's three to four weeks away, but we yeah. shall see. Um we also have we have free agency, and we'll continue to work the mock draft board for all of us to learn who's there, who can we expect, um, whether it be at pick 14 or all our third rounders and fourth rounders, who to expect. That will be there tomorrow night on mock, uh, mock draft Mondays. We plan on going all seven rounds, which should be interesting to try to fit it in in under, under 45 minutes. I could tell you for sure I don't know anybody below that fourth round range. So it'll be interesting to learn. It's all a process. We all get to cheer and root for the best. And we'll see. Drew asks, what school did Tom Brady attend? Well, it wasn't the one from Ohio. Nope. Was not Ohio State. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh man. Anyways, the guy is the guy's living in the past. Uh-huh. It's uh, he's definitely Tom's goat when it comes to NFL, without a doubt. Seven titles, ten Super Bowls. I'm not going to argue. There's nothing close. Anyways, with that, everybody, continue to have a great weekend. Be safe. Be healthy. Try to stay warm because it's chilly all over the place. And as always, Not in Sacramento. <laughs> as always, Skull Vikings! Skull Vikings, eh? That was for Ruby. Thank you for watching or listening. As always, if you like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. And if you're listening to the podcast, please rate us on your favorite aggregator. Skull, everybody.